welcome to the Kiosk Presents, and today we're going to talk about animal activism and especially whale wars. It's season five this year, premiering in June on Animal Planet at 9 p.m. on Fridays. And today we have Shannon Mann, who's the quartermaster, and Chad Halstead, who is the deckhand uh, on the uh, Steve Irwin, I believe, correct? Yep. Yeah, we're both on it. the Steve. Hi, it's very, very nice to meet you. I have to tell you, I have seen the show, and it's really exciting. <laughs> it's a lot of fun to watch. Um, now, you basically battle Japanese whaling in the Southern Ocean, for those who may not know. Why do you do this? Um, I mean, really, um, the Japanese whaling fleet's going down to kill a thousand whales in a designated marine sanctuary. And at this point, nobody else is doing anything about this issue. So um, if we don't go down there, um, really, no one's going to do anything about this. Mm. And we feel that it's, you know, it's, it's really important. Now, you both have left the comforts, comforts of home for this type of life. I'm sure people occasionally will say to you, what are you thinking? <laughs> Why are you doing this? You left all the, the creature comforts and you're out on this boat. What's the deal? And, and why would you, what is your passion? Why do you do that? I, I just feel like, I actually feel like I'm the fortunate one that I get to fulfill my passion and go and participate in such um, an iconic campaign, really. We're going down to save sometimes endangered species. Fin whales are an endangered species and they are part of Japan's quota. Um, so, I don't know, I, can't, I mean, it's not necessarily as comfortable as being at home and going yeah. to the coffee shop, but it's also your full, you know, the ship is full of fantastic people. Um, you know, everyone's like-minded and we have a similar passion, so I, know, I, yeah. I feel pretty lucky to be doing it. I mean, it is, it is tough at times. Um, you know, we do sacrifice a lot. Um, you know, it's, it's through the holiday season, but these are things that, that I hope that I can um, do after we succeed in this campaign in shutting down commercial whaling. Kind of the time to act is now, um, and I can, I can relax later. Yeah. Right, so, so you're saying basically you're having a full life, you're doing something that matters right now in the world of animal activism. That, that's very, very cool. Now, this year, uh, for season five, it's called Operation Divine Wind, and you're in the Antarctica, Antarctica area, and I would assume it's very cold. Yeah. It's a little, it's actually, I think, slightly colder in Canada at times, but yeah, the temperatures get, um, you know, pretty well below freezing. Plus, you have the factor of the storms and the high winds and then the ice. So it's, uh, it's not just cold, it can be pretty treacherous for the pretty ships dangerous. down there. Yeah. Yeah, now I understand that in this season, the scout vessel, the Bridget Bardot, uh, gets hit by a wave. Can you tell us anything about that? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, um, you know, as Shannon touched on, some of the storms in the Southern Ocean are really some of the worst storms in the world. Um, and unfortunately, uh, the Bridget Bardot was, was damaged from, from a rogue wave, just a, a very large wave. Um, and it's something that, you know, we, we will never turn around just because it's a bad storm. You know, we still feel that our mission is more important and that we're willing to, to put ourselves in that situation and kind of risk our own safety. Right. Now, now what would you say is the most exciting part about what you do? Um, wow, that's a, that's a tough question because yeah. there's, so many, there's so many different aspects of the campaigns just from, you know, sheer moments of crazy intense action to times where we just spend on the ship and you know play cards watch movies mm -hmm. um, gosh I mean the most exciting I would I think Chad's that, a small uh, boat driver so <laughs> I think the most satisfying moment is just seeing the factory ship the Nishin Maru um, that's the moment where you can you can exhale you know that that kind of the search is over and from that point out no whales will be killed. Um, it's it's mission mission success, game over. Um, that's what it's all about. That's kind of that's that's the target of our whole campaign, and, and and seeing that ship is about the best feeling that you could ever have. Right. It's it's got to be a, a very tough thing um, to to deal with seeing all of all of the issues that are going on out there in the in the Southern Ocean. Um, what would you say that what would you like your viewers to know the most about? Um, in terms of what you're doing or maybe what they can do today to help the cause? Um, mm -hmm. I, I think that it's just really important. Um, you know, I'm, I'm 
we're all just volunteers. You know, we're all just normal people from probably small towns. And and I kind of want people to hopefully watch the show and get motivated and, and educate themselves. And hopefully it's just an inspiration for them to go out and make a difference. Um, mm -hmm. Everybody's got the power to, to do some sort of positive change. Yeah, there's something, there's something for everyone, you know, to get involved and try to create like a healthier community, healthier planet from even really small things that individuals can do add up to large differences when they're embraced by a lot of people. Yeah. And speaking of that, you, Shannon, had started a nonprofit called FLEA or FLEA, is that right? Yeah, and right now we're actually incorporating that into a site called Backyard Activist, where it actually the purpose of that site is to answer that question precisely. What can I do to get involved? And that would just be a location-based platform so people could, you know, basically enter where they live and find out all the things that they can uh, get involved with in their community. Oh, that's terrific. Now, now the two of you are also, um, I should mention, you're both vegans, correct? And that's an interesting type of lifestyle for if people don't understand what that is. Um, can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, S simply the number one uh, choice you can make to contribute to um, reducing your, you know, your footprint. Um, agriculture contributes to 18% of greenhouse gases, so just by adopting a vegan diet actually saves a lot of uh, animals and the environment as well. Wow, very cool. Now, let me just ask you one other thing uh, about uh, your dog because I, have, I love dogs. You have a dog, Shannon, named Jack, is yes. that right? Yes, <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> now, I do, I'm not sure of this. Is Jack with you on the boat? No, he's not. Thank, he's not. thank goodness I have my sister who looks after him while I'm away, but it, that is probably the hardest thing about being on the ship is I, I missing him, yeah. What kind of dog is he? Uh, he came from the pound. He's a Rottweiler lab, I think. Oh, Mutt, the best rescue, kind. Rescue pounds are the best, rescue dogs are the best kind. All right, well, we'd like to thank Shannon Mann and Chad Halstead for joining us today on The Kiosk Presents, talking about animal activism and Whale Wars Season 5, premiering in June on Animal Planet, 9 p.m. on Fridays. Thanks, guys. Thank, thank you, Carol. The fisheries minister said today that Japan would call its harpoon ships home amid the continuing harassment by anti-whaling group Sea Shepherd. He actually said our name in his own press release, which is fantastic. <laughs> The moment had arrived that it appeared that they were going home and we'd beat them. For me personally, it was just a very emotional moment. It was, it was a moment I'll never forget. This is pretty much the end of seven years of campaigning down here. I think that this is the century that we're going to find whaling will be tossed into the dustbin of history and left for what it is, antiquated, unnecessary, barbaric, uncivilized, and no place in the modern world. So thank you all for, for participating. Thank you for this success. Nishin Maru, Nishin Maru, this is the Bob Barker. Thank you for your cooperation in leaving the Antarctic Treaty Zone. Let this be your last trip because we never give up and we never compromise. Guys, Paul here. There's a lot of movement on the docks. You can see it from where you are right now, eh? Yeah, across the harbor. You don't have any police or anybody tailing you? No. How many crew do you see around there? They look like they're working on the boat? Yeah, they're on the move. OK, we'll see where it goes. Japan's whaling fleet has left its home port for another season in the Southern Ocean, and it's getting there courtesy of extra money given to it from the nation's earthquake recovery fund. The Japanese fleet will have beefed up security after its last season was cut short by the Sea Shepherd anti-whaling group. As word of Japan's return to whaling spreads, the Sea Shepherds are stunned to learn that their war is not over. It was disheartening to hear that they were heading back down south again. I was really surprised. It's shocking. They have no business being down there now. I didn't want to come back. 
I didn't want to have to come back, but unfortunately, we don't really have a choice. I think that the Japanese whaling fleet is more motivated by revenge now, and they're acting out of desperation than anything. And this last season was a total humiliation for them. So we expect that they're going to be quite angry with the vast amount of money the Japanese have available. I really don't know exactly what they're going to do. I'm going to give it a full rinse, just make sure everything's uh, ready. In the wake of the shocking announcement out of Japan, the Sea Shepherds abandoned campaigns around the world. We're going to get ready to go now. Let's get the teams mobilized. Yeah, copy that. 